Hi there, it's Thursday again. I cannot believe how time is flying. <laughs> um, I just want to double verify that both Instagram and Facebook have gone live. It seems like it. I'm seeing the live button, so welcome. Today is Thursday. It's 12 noon, and that means I am going live, like every week. <laughs> I can see Jerry's just logged in on Instagram. Hello, welcome to you. Ingela also on, and Catherine. Yay, Instagram is coming up really quickly today. I think Facebook is a little bit slower, <laughs> although we all know it's the same platform, right? So my name is Tanya Uester. I'm coming from my page Botanicomy, Alchemy of Soothing Botanic Ingredients. And every Thursday I come to you live because I would like to teach you a little bit more about essential oils, the chemistry behind them, and why they have the effect that they have on our bodies. So uh, I can see, oh, there we go. Hello, hello, Dr. TQ. I'm hi, TQ. What is the cue for? Put it in the comments. What is the cue there? Yes, it's Dr. T. Hello, Sandra. I can see you've just logged in on Facebook as well. Welcome, welcome. So I'm very glad to have you all online today. I think we all got a bit of a scare earlier in the week, realizing how dependent we are on certain communication channels. Um, and I guess um, it made us really aware of having backup channels, which was quite exciting. Um, nothing as good as a, a forced change, right? Um, teaching us how to adapt really, really quickly. Oh, Elsa Maria is on today. Welcome, welcome. It's her first live. <laughs> well, I hope you do find value today. And then if there's any of the previous series or episodes that you would like to watch, please always go back to my YouTube channel. You can go and watch all the replays there. And if you subscribe, then obviously you're going to be notified as soon as I upload the video there as well. Janine, you've also just logged in. Welcome, welcome. Oh, okay. Valkyrie is saying it's not, not Dr. TQ. It's just Dr. T. <laughs> I know the comments are really annoying. You can't go and edit when you've made a typo. I've realized that in Instagram reels, especially. <laughs> and I'm someone that types very quickly. So I usually have quite a lot of typos. So please excuse me. I will go and try and fix them if the edit option is available. Um, all right, great. So Elsie Maria is saying that she really loves the chemistry series, but today obviously being the first time she can log in live. So let's see um, how we can get today started. So last week we talked about alpha pinene. Now alpha pinene, if you remember correctly, is um, part of that piney scent and it is found in a lot of coniferous trees. Um, and it's probably a very well-known chemical constituent because you do find it in quite a lot of plants. So today we're going to talk about the isomer called beta pinene. And although beta pinenes are usually found together with alpha pinenes in the same plants, it does, yeah, it's, it's there in a, in a lower concentration. So let's say in smaller amounts. Um, and there are some plants that are very heavy on the beta, beta alpines. Uh, sorry, beta pinenes. So it's almost as the alpha pinenes is very low, um, but mostly the alpha pinenes is actually quite high in comparison to the beta pinenes. And they are isomeric forms of each other. So the beta, um, beta pinene um, is a bicyclic two circles. I don't even have to draw the picture for you anymore. You can now know exactly what I'm talking about after watching me a couple of times. So it's bicyclic two circles, right? And it's a monoterpene alkene. So remember about the monoterpene alkenes, the alkenes don't have a functional group, but there is a double bond. And it's that double bond that we're after because the double bond allows it to scavenge free radicals that are floating around, which also means usually the oils that are high in alkenes, which beta pinene is, are going to be really good at quenching those free radicals, which is going to be really supportive for our body's cellular health, as well as immune response. I can also see Essentially Daily Drops have just joined on Instagram. Welcome, welcome. It's so good to have you all on again today. So let's get started with beta pinene. Um, and the difference, the, the main difference on the physical level, specifically of the 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 sort of chemical structure between the alpha pinene and the beta pinene. Let's just throw in the nerd science there if you would like to separate them, although I don't know why we would. <laughs> but the alpha pinene, because it's an essential, it becomes an essential oil, is obviously oil soluble, can also dissolve in ethanol, but not water. Um, whereas the beta pinene, soluble in oil, 
but cannot dissolve in ethanol or water. All right, so there's, the, there's a key difference between the two of them. Not that we would ever be using the chemical constituents on their own, um, because I'm gonna show you again, highlight again today, why it is so important to use a whole oil instead of a chemical constituent, a single one that has been synthesized in a laboratory. We now have very good clinical research showing us that our bodies are very equipped um, to use the whole essential oil and that our bodies are really intuitive in knowing how to metabolize and use the chemical constituents when they're coming from plants, um, but that they are incredibly less effective when we are using a lab synthesized chemical constituent, especially if it's there on its own without any of its synergistic counterparts that are also found in that whole oil. So, the um, chemical constituents here, the alpha pinene and beta pinene always being there together, um, that, that's quite important, right? But on its own, beta pinene is probably more known for its respiratory support compared to alpha pinene, which is very much there for really good relaxing properties, good cellular health, um, and that skin whitening that I was talking about last week. All those very expensive beauty products, especially in Japan, a lot of those products contain quite a lot of essential oils or um, chemicals that they've made in the lab that are high in alpha pinenes, whereas beta pinenes, very good for respiratory support. Now, if you just think about the pine smells, beta pinene, that is the classic Christmas tree. So the beta pinene's highest concentration we do find in a tree called Douglas fir. And that is the very original Christmas tree that you would find in the Northern, he Northern Hemisphere. So now you can sort of start to think, <laughs> although we all smell things differently, you can sort of start to think what that would smell like. So beta um, pinene obviously is also obtained commercially. Um, it's not just from essential oils, although we're gonna prefer the ones that are gonna come from essential oils. Um, and as I said, very good for the respiratory tract, but also well known in research, um, especially when we start looking at clinical research for digestive as well as very high in antibacterial properties. Um, really, really good. So it's if we look at the at the um, pharmaceutical, oh, Insta's just gone down. <laughs> there we go. I just want to try and see if we can get Insta back. There, Insta is back. I'm so sorry, guys, I lost you. It seems that the phone just goes off, so I'll just keep on having to tap on the screen. If you lose me there too many times on Insta, please head on over to Facebook. I'm live there as well. <laughs> All right, so if we do look um, at the commercial industry that they use beta pinene, because it's actually used quite extensively, um, it is also an intermediate in chilled dairy products for some reason. I haven't gone to dig why yet. Um, and then, obviously, it is a precursor to several other constituents. In other words, it's part of the process to produce other chemical constituents, for example, in plants or in the, the chemical pharmaceutical industry. So um, very well-known molecule actually, although found in a, in a smaller concentration in plants together with the alpha pinenes. Um, and because it's an alkene, remember there's the no functional group, um, but as a group, they're going to have antibacterial properties, it's going to have anti-inflammatory properties. Um, and when we look specifically at the Tisserand guide for beta pinenes, although we always um, sort of read the information that it's really good for respiratory health, believe it or not, this is one of the, the chemical constituents which actually can cause eye and airway irritation when used on its own. Now, this is really important. That's why it's always good to know that you need to use the entire whole essential oil because the essential oil constituents that are most commonly cited in irritants for respiratory health is monoterpenes, alpha pinenes, beta pinenes, and delta-3 carines. Those are usually the essential oils that you are associating with. You know, the people that are, are, are working in the lumber industry, working in forests, for example, they get a very high dose of those, those chemicals while they're working there. Um, and usually they have respiratory issues, but um, it's because they, everything is not together, for example, or they're not using um, the correct protection and they're breathing in a lot of dust and other kinds of um, impurities with it. Um, and there's a lot of chemicals obviously used in the, in, the, um, in the lumber industry as well. So it's sort of a combination of all those things. But Tisserand very clearly state, although they are irritants on their own, 
in, in spite of the fact that I'm going to quote from that safety guide for medical professionals, that the four comp these four components, those chemical constituents I talked about, can be very irritating. Clinical data suggests that these compounds and essential oils containing them may be therapeutic when used to treat respiratory disease. So when they are with their synergistic counterparts in the oil, they can actually benefit the respiratory system instead of being irritating to the respiratory system. And that is why it's so absolutely crucial to be using a whole essential oil and not the single chemical constituents. So the beta pinenes are virtually non-irritant. Um, they're non-sensitizing. The only time you really pick up a skin um, reactivity is when you're using it at a very high concentration without proper dilution like we are used to with carrier oils and especially when the oil starts oxidizing. And we know, know that most products, whether it's essential oils, food products, any kind of product that gets exposed to oxygen um, will start degrading over time. It starts oxidizing um, and beta pinene is no different to that. It has very high antibacterial properties. Um, I can also see Alcus just logged in from Belgium. Welcome, welcome. So I think I might have to switch devices next week um, because there's more people on Insta today than there's on Facebook. <laughs> um, and then I'll switch devices because this device keeps on dropping Instagram for some reason. Maybe I'll just do an update. Um, and the, the beta pinenes, um, specifically on the antibacterial side, are as effective... Um, against certain microorganisms compared to alpha pinenes. And now think of the double whammy you're going to get when you're using oils that have got both of those chemical constituents in there. They're very effective um, in supporting the antibiotic efficacy for specifically MRSA. So that's that methylene resistant Staphylococcus aureus, that superbug. Um, Cryptococcus pneumoniae, as well as Canada albicans, which is normal yeast, right? The one that um, people get the, the yeast infection from. Um, and it's very effective against the biofilm specifically. Now, our biofilm is that protective calcified layer um, that bacteria or yeast makes to protect themselves, right? So it's like a nice niche, nice habitat for them to grow in. Um, and specifically, um, these alpha and the beta pinenes are very effective against the organisms um, these organisms that I mentioned that live in that biofilm. So most of the, the clinical data is on respiratory research, but I also find quite a lot of information where um, the beta pinenes are being studied specifically as an insecticide for head lice, for example. Um, there's also quite a few studies mentioning it in brain health. So for when people have a condition, for example, with short-term memory loss or forgetfulness, um, the beta pinenes can be very effective there. And there, again, you're trying to access the brain. So a really good way to be using them, especially when you want to benefit the respiratory system, is to use them aromatically in a diffuser. So check about... <laughs> Check at the back there. The diffusers are obviously going. I always have them going, um, uplifting the mood, really supportive for the respiratory tract. Um, and I've got a new pilot diffuser going there at the back as well, which is really exciting. It's a USB chargeable. It can run for eight hours. Um, new addition to my office, which I find incredibly exciting. Yes, nerding out about a diffuser here. Um, but for those of you that don't have it yet, go and get it. It is really, really awesome. So if we start looking... Um, with all the research, because I know there's a lot of research and most people don't always know how to interpret it because yes, there are very big words used um, and there is a reason for that. That is scientific language. Like if you're learning a new language like Portuguese, for example, it's just, it's the language that science is written in. And whereas I don't understand anything in law um, and any kind of contracts, for example, because that is a different language to what I'm used to, the science language, obviously, I've learned over time because of all my many years of studying. Um, so I always try and explain it in a, a simple as possible manner for you to get why these oils are working. Um, but I also sometimes oversimplify. So I'm never really explaining the full complexity because I'm trying to get it so that the regular person, um, when they're hearing the science, doesn't go, oh, run away, I don't want to hear that, so that they too can benefit from understanding why these essential oils are so powerful in our lives and why they can have such a beneficial, supportive effect in helping our bodies to heal the natural way. So if we start comparing the essential oils themselves that have got high concentrations in um, beta pinenes, I actually, where did I put it now? Oh, here it is. No, has it fallen over? It was on my table like a second ago. Anyway, galbanum. <laughs> 
That is the oil I was wanting to pick up here. It's got a very weird smell. It's one of those oils, the galbanum or galbanum is one of those plants or essential oils um, traditionally used um, in biblical times. So it's a very much a biblical oil and it's got a very weird fragrance to it, something that you definitely need to get used to. And when you pop it in the diffuser, probably going to want to add some other essential oils in there. But that oil, for example, is probably one of the oils that is the highest in beta pinenes. If we then start looking at some of the rest of the essential oils that do contain it, the first one that comes up is the Douglas fir at the highest concentration between 20 and 40. And now you may say 20 to 40 is not that high. No, it's not. But remember, um, beta pinenes do come in a plant at a lower concentration compared to the alpha pinenes, as well as all the other main constituents that you would find in that plant. But for us, um, Douglas fir, probably the more used essential oil, 20 to 40 percent. Um, and the uses that Douglas fir is most known for is promoting feelings of clean air, uh, clear airways, beta pinenes in there, and easy breathing. It's coming from those piney molecules, right? With all the other chemical constituents that are working in synergy with what is in that Douglas fir. Um, and the body systems that are usually um, supported by Douglas fir include the nervous system, the respiratory system, and the, and the skin. And the reason why it's the skin is because of the alpha pinenes, which are also present in there, okay? Cleansing and purifying, in other words, and it's really good in supporting a positive mood. I'm going to be talking about the emotional specific um, details of the oils that I do know we have available and are readily in use in South Africa. Um, so when I get to those oils where the beta pinene is in a higher concentration, I am going to mention that. Ooh, Zabeda's just also logged in. And Bev, welcome, welcome. Hope you do are doing well today. Good to see you on some of my regulars. <laughs> All right, so now let's go to yarrow. Now, yarrow, essential oil on its own, actually contains the beta pinenes between 10 to 30%. And we have a Dio, should we call it a Dio? A combination of pomegranate seed oil, which is really good for skincare and antioxidant support, that has the yarrow essential oil in it. So you could definitely be using that, but I would not be putting that in my diffuser. That would be a very large waste. I would rather be applying that topically to my skin. Um, and it can also obviously be used internally because of the very high antioxidant support, for example, and the fact that it supports really good collagen production. But here, looking specifically at the beta, there we go. We had poor connection. Sorry about that. I hope I'm back. Facebook and Insta went down. <laughs> we are going to have to get used to that, I think. Um, so basically, the yarrow, um, when taken internally, can promote cellular and immune and nervous system health support. Um, but it's also really good for the immune system, the nervous system and the skin. In bergamot, now this is an oil that we use very routinely for emotions, especially um, we can't use it topically, actually, unless you have the version where they've com removed the component that is so incredibly photosensitive that's going to give you skin sensitivity or pigmentation, right? So bergamot is probably one of the oils that has that component. It's in a very small percentage, but it's, uh, um, it's got a very strong effect in the bergamot or the bergamot. So bergamot is a really good emotional essential oil also has the beta pinenes in it, one of the higher ones, and bergamot relieves feelings of despair, um, self-judgment, and low self-esteem. So it's the oil of self-acceptance. Um, and I really like that oil. I don't necessarily enjoy the bergamot on its own. I always combine it with other essential oils, particularly in my diffuser. And for those of you that want that calming, soothing benefit, here's a top tip. If you don't have all gray tea, <laughs> all gray is actually made from bergamot. So usually it is the bergamot plant itself if you buy the original thing. But if you are going to buy the imitation Earl Grey's, you can simply um, make your own by putting some black tea bags into a glass bottle that seals really well, and then add a drop or two of bergamot. Food grade, tested grade essential oil, please. Only the one that has the food supplement on the side. If it says not internal, please don't use it internal. <laughs> but the bergamot that I use that is tested grade that I have the lab results for, I regularly make Earl Grey tea um, when my, my real thing runs out. Glass bottle, couple of uh, tea bags, one to two drops of bergamot in that glass bottle and seal it. So when you open that bottle, you're going to get that aromatic experience of the emotional benefit. And it's also going to be really soothing to the digestive tract as well. So if you're feeling unlovable, for example, or hopeless, I don't know, I sometimes wake up feeling that I am hopeless because I'm just, I don't know, 
wrong foot out of the bed sometimes. <laughs> Luckily, we have all these amazing tools that can support us, right? Bergamot will support your shift towards feeling more hopeful, confident, lovable, like you're good enough. Um, and it helps to release or helps to tell the brain, because remember when you're going to inhale it, it's going to go up olfactory nerve sensors just below the bony part of your nose are going to pick up the messages and the neurotransmitters called dopamine yes and serotonin are going to increase right the secretion of those two are going to increase when there's a lot of bergamot around you so very very good essential oil to have around and now you also know it's good um, going to be good for respiratory support because it's got beta pinenes in it then blue tansy has it around two to ten percent which we are quite familiar with regard regarding skin care and blemishes for example or when you want to apply it topically to support achy muscles um, it's also in cumin at four to thirty five percent cumin being a really good digestive oil that's probably what it's most known well or well known for lime we have lime don't we love lime i love lime oh it's just it's just so zesty um, and it's actually called the the zest of life oil um, and it instills hope, joy, courage, and determination to face all of life's challenges. So there's a really good reason to keep lime around. And obviously, it's a beautiful oil to cook with as well. Um, usually, I add it at the end of the cooking process because it is um, one of those top notes. So it, it actually diffuses back into the air um, quite or, or sort of, you know, flashes off quite quickly. So better to add it um, after the cooking process has already stopped. Um, but lime is really nice and high in, in, the, be um, in the beta pinenes. Um, very good for digestive support, immune system support, and then also the respiratory because of the beta pinenes that are in there. Lemon. Oh, I use lemon almost daily. Not almost. I do use it daily, but for various applications, right? So I clean my home with it. It's in my diffuser. Um, it's just really one of those oils that is all round. I drink it in my water because it really supports internal detoxification quite nicely, supports the digestive tract. So the lemon specifically, my batch that I have at the moment, I just checked it again this morning, 13.9% is the beta pinene concentration in there. Obviously, lemon is well known for its limonene concentration, which is very high in the lemon itself, which is good for the mood upliftment. Um, but definitely, it also contains beta pinenes. So it's also really good for the respiratory tract. For, um, for example, when you're going to be putting it in the diffuser for focus, you're going to support the respiratory tract at the same time. If we look at the emotional side, it infuses the soul with energy, confidence, and alertness. All the things that we are all really craving at this stage. So um, there's more oils. Black pepper, for example, also contains the beta pinene, um, uh, 2 to 20%, depending on whose brand you're buying um, and how pure the oil is, for example, and ex where it's sourced, <laughs> the time of day it's sourced. Um, the soil conditions, obviously, the climate, the area in the world that it's grown in are all going to have a, a role to play in that chemical constituent ratio. Um, and black pepper, the reason you would use black pepper, for example, when you're looking for that beta pinene, um, is more to do with the digestive tract, the cardiovascular system, as well as the nervous system. So there's a lot of benefits from beta pinene, although it's a lesser known chemical constituent, because we always focus on the ones that are there in very high concentration. And it's probably prevalent in quite a, um, quite a large amount of essential oils, but not the oils that we use very routinely on a daily basis. The ones we do use on a re really routinely basis, we're probably more after the alpha pinenes. But now you know they're isomers um, and that the beta pinenes are also beneficial. They do have a very important role to play in that essential oil that you are using. So if I can just summarize, really good for respiratory health. Um, really good research starting to show for really good for brain health as well. So definitely put it in the diffuser. Um, respiratory, again, in the diffuser is going to serve you really, really well. Topically, I would be careful about the bergamot, uh, the bergamot and the citrus oils, especially in our South African hot summer, um, because our sun is quite potent. <laughs> um, if you're in a country where there's less sun, obviously you can risk it. Um, if I do apply the citrus oils topically, I usually only do it in the evening or I apply it to a space on my body where I know I'm going to be covered with clothing that is really UV resistant. The beta pinene is the oil that is going to uplift you from dysfunctional generational patterns. So definitely a good one to have around. If you have the galbanum because you bought the biblical oil collection, put it in the diffuser um, for that beta pinene effect. And then you now you know you can enhance that by adding lime, lemon, and bergamot. 
So I really hope you learned a little bit more about beta pinenes today. It's bicyclic, two circles, alkene, so it's the double bond, very high in antioxidant power, quenches the free radicals, so very supportive to the immune system as well. It's a really good chemical constituent to have around, but definitely in combination with its synergistic partners so that it does not become an irritant to your respiratory tract. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope I will see you all again next week, Thursday, for my next live, when we're going to be delving back into the chemistry series for our next chemical constituent. Please feel free to share this, obviously, with anyone <laughs> that you think may benefit. And if there's any additional questions that came up um, because uh, my Facebook dropped at some stage, they may I can see there's comments that came through, but I can't see them anymore. I will just go back in afterwards um, and go and answer any questions that you may have had during my live session today. Thank you so much for joining. See you soon. Bye-bye.